I'm Katrina. This is So and Tear, and I haven't planted my winter garden yet, guys. Yeah, we're almost the, to the new year. By the time you guys watch this, it will be in the new year, and I haven't planted my winter garden. However, I have lots of stuff that I grow. I just did a video you guys probably saw already. If not, I'll put a link up here um, about the lazy way of gardening to go around and eat what you already have. <laughs> I did notice, however, that I have nasturtiums coming up. Volunteer nasturtiums, who's all for that? And I have plants. I'm gonna put nasturtiums here. So I installed this archway a long time ago. I can probably put a link up here about doing that if we did a link. If not, I'll just do it to an arch trellis video. Um, it's the same same method, except for I put it up higher on, the, on this T-post. But I really want stuff to be beautiful and edible and yummy growing on this entryway to my house. And right now, these over here are tree collards. Um, they seeded themselves. I kind of just wove them in between because I didn't want them to fall down. And so they're doing great, but that's not really my goal. I have nasturtiums and I love nasturtiums. They are tasty, they are yummy, they are good. And so these are what I'm going to plant. There are varieties that are short and there's varieties that are tall. We have some short varieties. We have tall varieties. Um, there's some that are really tall, like climbing ones, and then there's shorter ones. So I'm actually going to put both in there and see where, see what we end up with. Um, I wish I had more of the, t of the climbing ones. And I might actually check my seed packets and see if I have more. Now nasturtiums, when you, when you plant these, you want to soak them for 24 hours before. Now we've had a lot of rain, the soil is moist, we're going to have more rain next week, so I'm going to skip that step. Um, the reason why you soak it is to break that seed coat open to uh, so the water can actually get to the seed. So it, it's a way of protecting itself from, hey, if it does a little bit of drizzle, then you have these things happening. Um, you know, they might start that way. If there's just a little drizzle, these guys won't start growing in, a, in the wrong season. So they really want moist conditions to start. And so we're going to plant some of these. So we currently have this bed that is taken over by these tree collards. Now I am going to pot these up and try to sell some of them. And I think that would be really, really good for people to have. I don't need this many. <laughs> um, there's plenty of seeds throughout the yard that I will have plenty of tree collard. So I haven't completely done water with this area at this point. Um, this one does have water connected up. It's, um, it needs repair. The other side of this archway uh, doesn't have water yet. So I need to do that at this point. I just need to get these things in the ground. <laughs> so that's what's happening. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is do the ones I know climb on the back and that will climb up this trellis and then the ones that might be shorter might have a little bit of height I'll be putting in this front part of the bed. Here's what the seeds look like. Some of them might be a little crumbled so we're gonna double plant them. Two and a half there. I'm just gonna shove these in here. Now the ones that um, came up they obviously planted themselves which means they may have been on the surface. They may have been, um, you know, on the surface and then buried, but they're good. So I will be putting these kind of in the front. These seeds look much more healthy. So I'm just gonna put one um, per area. This soil here is actually from the Racken House, which is rabbits and chickens. And um, so that is all made by chickens and rabbits, which is pretty cool with some, um, they're in deep litter and this is the result. I'll probably have to add some more around the outside here, it has settled. Now over on this side, we have a lot of um, California poppy, there's some borage here. I'm gonna just let that grow and see what happens. I may end up pulling out some of that later, especially the borage, it gets pretty big, but it also might shade the roots of these plants when they get bigger. And it does get warm here in summer. Maybe it might extend their life, we'll see. These are yarrow, I'm gonna chop that. <laughs> later. If you guys are hearing um, a helicopter I didn't think it was life flight, might be life flight or um, it's a news helicopter maybe. 
I don't know. It's been around for a little bit. Oh well. So seeds you generally want to plant um, just under the surface, uh, basically twice as deep as they are uh, wide and that will be enough for them. I have a Fiesta blend I'm going to put kind of on the front as well. And you can see these have bigger seeds. I'll probably throw some of these in the other one too. And again, we're putting the climbing ones right underneath the trellis. My hope is that in a couple months we'll have some really good ones. Now these seeds, they're kind of dark, they're kind of old. I'm wondering if they're still good, so I'm going to kind of double and triple up. So it's time to clean up these tomatoes and what I do is I cut them off and put them underneath my citrus trees. That's what I've done every year and then I put more wood chips on top of them when I get to it. <laughs> so that's been my process. You don't want to feed your tomato plants to your birds or to your other animals because they are poisonous. So there you go. Now leaving the roots in the bed means that the microbes don't have to rebuild the highways, which is a good thing. That's why you always cut it off. Chickens will like that. All right, babies. Wait for it. Oh, you're ready. I was gonna. Okay. You're welcome, Smilo. Sorry, girls. <laughs> I was going to give it to them equally. I was going to give it to them equally, but I guess they figured it out themselves. Good girls. Tomato football. <clears throat> All right. Now, it's time to learn from my mistakes. <laughs> my mistakes, your gain. <laughs> um, if you are going to choose what you're gonna have, um, a plant, and then put it in a Ziploc bag and be ready, like, okay, I'm just gonna take this out, and then you sit there for a while and it gets moved and moved and by you and by other people, it, <clears throat> that's what you end up with. <laughs> so. I have a suspicion which pea it is because I have an almost empty packet and these are brassica seeds. Oops. These are brassica seeds. So I have in here broccoli, kale, bok choy. Um, I think I have, I have some other things in here. So I don't remember, I mean, they're, they're in here still, but Basically how I'm gonna address this is, I don't know what these are. I know these are brassicas, they don't grow tall. I know these are peas, they grow somewhat tall. I don't know which pea it is, so I don't know which um, height it is, but they're all gonna go in this bed. Um, it's a lot of peas, so the peas might actually go in other beds. That's a lot of, we might spread it around, but I'll be surprised. <laughs> Uh, it is a good idea to diversify your garden, and apparently this is how I'm doing it. <laughs> Not uh, the way I plan to do it, but hey, it's okay. Um, so something else that I'm going to be planting. So these are. This is all I'm going to be planting is these things down here. I planted the nasturtiums, and then I am going to get out some garbanzo beans and shove those in the ground. 
and for my winter garden that's what's gonna look like I have a lot of things growing already I have a lot of things starting on their own and that's what's gonna look like we can reseed more of these as time goes by and whether it actually happens or not will depend on if I remember time weather etc so I'm gonna dig in here get these out and we'll put them in here now I'm going to put the peas near the trellis so we have this horseshoe trellis here and then um, the other stuff is going to be on either side of it and hopefully we'll have a good year all right it is december it is the end of december the end of the year typically typically you want to plant these like a couple months ago but our weather's been weird it, i could have it would be great if i did because then i would have more food but um it it's fine to plant it now. We've had a super warm winter and it's not like we get all that cold anyway. Um, we do get below freezing sometimes, but um, I'm not worried about these seedlings coming up and then dying. So let's get planting. So we have a little oak tree here that a little Jay planted. I pull those up at my earliest convenience because look how big those roots are. They just get bigger. So that's what I do. The jays are super good at planting them. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to plant two peas in each hole and I'm going to um, just put my fingers into the soil, put those in, cover them up. And I believe, I believe these are burpee early peas because there's one left in here. <laughs> now, when you are dealing with peas when it's not raining yet, you do wanna soak them overnight. And it's the same thing with the nasturtiums. They just do better um, with that seed coat affected. But since we have really wet ground and we have rain on the way, uh, I'm going to skip that step. You want to be careful when planting in fall and spring, mostly spring. Um, pay attention to what birds you have. I know in my area, if the white crowned sparrows have come into the yard, I will delay my planting because they will literally just unplant everything I just planted. So I want some way to avoid that, put netting over or put some uh, tool over or um, even those strawberry baskets, those plastic strawberry baskets, turn them upside down, stake them down over your seeds, and because they will rip them up. They will also um, really, really love lettuce, <laughs> and then you will get no lettuce. So I'm just planting around where the tomatoes used to grow. And those will end up rotting and leaving spaces where the roots were and the fungi and the um, all the little critters, little microbes under there will find those spots and use it as a highway. Now it can be too wet for peas and I did have them rot one year. So it's a gamble every year. Take a look at these fun little lanterns that the uh, tomatillos make. Pretty cool, right? I do have some little thing coming up right here. It's probably a chard, so I'm gonna leave that there and plant some peas next to it. All right, here's my difficulty. Got everything in the corner here. And all the little seeds are on the bottom. See if I can get to them. Should probably take these out. Guys, this is tons of brassica seeds. All right, there are the brassica seeds. Got a few pea seedlings in there, or seeds in there. Now, I'd like to see what they might be for spacing. So let's see what's open, what looks like it might have fallen out, all those things. 
spinach looks good. These peas are good. These are probably the peas we have. Radishes. Turnip. Oh, that's empty. That's empty. A lot of this is probably turnip. Golden Globe turnip. Okay. That one's closed. Ooh, that one doesn't have much, but it doesn't really look like it fell open. Ooh. Well, these spinach seeds are coming open now. But we can save them. Tape your seed packets shut, guys. <laughs> It doesn't have very much in it, but I don't think it's open. That's open. I'm going to bet the majority of these are turnips, so I'm actually going to make a plan for these. So because I believe most of these brassica seeds are turnip seeds, I'm actually going to plant them over where my sweet potato bed is. Um, the sweet potatoes, I think, are a little bit waning. I'm just going to let them go this year. Um, it looks like they might have planted themselves in the next bed, and I might dig those up later. Not while, it, not, not while it's wet. Um, but I may dig those up later. But um, I like to keep my beds that are digging beds or beds with roots kind of the same beds and then allow these other beds to develop more fully into this whole system. So we could plant these there. You can eat you can eat the leafy greens of this too. Um, that would be completely fine. But I think they're probably Golden Globe turnip. I think this is what they are. What most of them are anyway. It's like nearly empty. And all the rest of the brassicas seem to have like the top is closed. So that's gonna be my plan for this. I didn't plan on planting these um, in the backyard, but I think I will because there's a lot of these. I don't have to plant them all now. I can save them for later, but I think I will plant a lot of them, not all of them. So this bed right here is the one I'm talking about. Um, there is a bunch of grass over there, so I'm not gonna plant them over there because I need to weed that first. Um, again, this is because I just let the grass grow and that was a bad idea. Um, but, the rest of this bed I will plant with turnips and it's fine to not plant an area because you can then succession sow and plant later. So that is what we're doing today uh, because there was an open seed packet. <laughs> this bed actually goes quite a bit back. It just has this big giant beet. Turnips and beets are related. Um, this is the giant beet that fell over. And I'm actually just going to surface sow these and then I will get some of my compost and sprinkle it over. That's going to be, I think, how these guys are going to be best done. Um, especially given the wet conditions and then also given that there's a lot of these. <laughs> Welcome to Gilroy. I have no idea what that was. This is the bed that had um, that hybrid squash in here. Zucchini and, it's a black beauty zucchini and the yellow crookneck squash. And so this was mostly shaded this year and didn't have much growth other than those things in it. So this will be good for the soil. Now it is highly probable beets will come up in this bed because of this huge plant here that was taller than I could reach. And that is completely fine. They'll grow together just fine. So we will go ahead and put a little bit of compost over that later. Um, I kind of want it to rain in a little bit first, but maybe not, I don't know, we'll see. A lot of things about, uh, a lot, of, a lot of 
a lot of gardening is being flexible, so remember that. Now, since we have, um, I have a pretty high confidence that that almost entirely probably is the turnip. Um, I do have broccoli-like things in the front, in the tree collards, but I figure I have some pretty old seeds for broccoli and romanesco, so I am going to plant some of those in this bed uh, with the peas, and that will be a really good mixture um, moving forward. So I have, again, really old seeds. Seeds still work when they get old. They, f fewer of them will germinate, but they, you know, you're unlikely to have like a dud a whole seed packet. It can happen, but like this one's really old. This one's from 2014. So we'll see if these sprout. Um, this one's from 2020. And this one's from 2020. So these were packed for 2020. These were, this was packed for 2014. Um, I might just put the two broccolis on either side of the Romanesco just to see about the 2014 broccoli. That means that these seeds were grown in 2023. I, I'm sorry. That means these seeds were grown in 2013, I believe. I think they only allow one year for it to be sold. I think. I could be wrong. Somebody tell me if I'm wrong. So we're gonna do the old seeds over here. The Romanesco in the middle. And Bellstar on the far side. And we can succession sow these as well. I wanna show you guys something pretty cool. So this right there is a tomatillo that has seed. The whole fruit has rotted and has seeds just inside. We'll probably collect those later. All right, looks like my battery is going out. So I will tell you what I'm doing. I'm gonna put more peas in this bed over here. Um, hopefully they'll climb up on this trellis. And then I am going to put garbanzo beans in random places that don't get water. That's, t that's what I've done before. And in good rain years, it works really well. Basically, I put them into where the wood chips are and the it's been pretty wet. They should soak through. And so this trellis going over here and this little book stand that I got um, housed our pumpkins this year. I'm just gonna add more peas because I have a bag of unknown peas. I might as well just plant more peas. It has been my goal to preserve peas <laughs> since I started planting peas and I just keep eating them out of the garden. So not very much preservation going on, but maybe this year, huh? I think I'm actually gonna plant some of these in the wood chips. See how that does. I have had them come up in the wood chips before. They don't tend to last very long, but I can do a few. All right, unless I decide to do more peas, that's all the peas I'm doing this, uh, all this planting. Um, garbanzo beans are next and let's go get them. All right, girlies. I know, you guys like the tomatoes better, huh? You're much more gentle, Rexy, than, ouch, Smilo. Yeah, I know, okay, Smilo is the tomato stealer. She's also the bug eater. You got a salad. And go to salad. Oh, you got more than salad. They are very spoiled chickens and they much prefer to eat out of my hand. So I have these garbanzo beans here in the garage um, <laughs> on top of stuff I'm gonna get rid of, but this is garbanzo beans, which is also called chickpea, organic from Azure Market, which is Azure Standard. And these open just like a feed bag, you pull the string on the right hand side and it opens. This is not the ideal way to store it, 
I have a lot of stuff in in uh, buckets. I just don't have enough buckets right now. So in here, you see there's tons and tons of garbanzo beans, and this is for food. But I also use these as seeds. So basically. I'm gonna say pretty much any because there might be an, an exception, but uh, basically any um, bean or pea or legume that you consume is a seed. So these are seeds and they, not focusing, but these are the seeds and this is what we're going to plant. Now I figured out this by accident, I soaked too many for hummus and uh, I made my hummus and then the rest of them like, oh, I have a bunch of soaked ones left over. I wonder if they'll grow. The answer is yes. So you can do this from your store, your grocery store. You can do it from, you know, these are, are organic. The other ones that I started off with are not, but I'm just gonna grab eh, a healthy handful. And guys, this costs a whole lot less than a seed packet, a whole lot less. I mean, a lot less. I mean, this is a big bag, it did cost a lot. But as far as these seeds go, it's a lot less to buy food <laughs> and plant it. So I'm just gonna plant that many, however many that is. And I'll show you a really cool way to do it. And we are hoping for rain because I'm not gonna plant these in areas that need to be watered. I'm gonna plant them in the wood chips and cross our fingers. And this has worked tremendously well before. It also works with, with fava beans, which I do have some seeds of that. Maybe I'll do that a different day. Like fava beans and um, radishes do really well. So both of those things I might, I might uh, plant a different day, but this is what we're doing today. Usually when you plant these, you soak them because the ground is so wet and because we have more rain on the way, I'm not gonna soak them first. So these are going straight in the ground. These are really good to, get to plant in and amongst things. So I'm gonna plant a bunch right along the edge of this walkway and that will be able to harvest from really good. It will be able to see what's going on. And it does get a little bit extra moisture because it's on the edge of the walkway and the water from the rain gets um, goes off onto the edge. Similar to how a roadside ditch gets watered. Now as I'm doing this, I am finding some little um, pieces of grass that are growing. So I'm pulling those as I go realizing I'm gonna have a grass problem this year. <laughs> Similar to the peas, I'm just pushing these in the ground. Now this right here is a pathway, but it's not gonna be used until, until there's stuff to harvest down there. By that time, these will be used. So I am going to plant them here. Push them in, cover them up. That's it. And hope the birds don't see you. There's a worm that came out. <laughs> Sorry, worm. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but there's a worm right here. I scared him, I think. Now this area right here is going to be a really good place to plant things. I have this lime tree that I need to clean up. It's coming back from the roots, which I don't know what the root is, what the uh, root stock is, but I'm breaking it with my feet because uh, I don't have clippers and it has thorns. <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. So I am seeing a lot of um, mushrooms in here, which is really good. It's going to be really good for the trees. Mushrooms are always helpful um, to these plants and I'm going to be planting a lot of these in this area. Um, it's gonna be fun. Again, I'm just going right into the wood chips. Just put it down and I'm putting my finger on it and pushing it in. Very similar to planting peas. Um, <laughs> and hoping no birds are watching. <laughs> I have not gotten these to naturalize. I don't know why that is. Um, 
I might be more efficient at harvesting them or they it may be the wrong climate or it may get too hot in the summer where they are um, I'm not sure but maybe one day I like seeds to plant themselves that's the best way to garden get the strongest plants so this area here will get some water because um, these trees get water. They didn't get water all last summer because I screwed up the irrigation. Once that's fixed, they'll get watered. So this might have a better chance of surviving um, to get the seeds. So there we go. This tree right here was a bear's lime. Um, it's no longer bear's lime. It died back and then Actually, I think it died back with the wetness last year. It got too much moisture, I, th I believe. It has never given me any fruit. I'm not connected to this plant at all. However, it is coming up from the roots. I have no idea what the rootstock is for this um, because it's a named variety of citrus. I know that it's, it's gonna be not what, what the name of the plant was. So I have no idea what this is now, but I'm gonna plant around it in hopes that Maybe it'll do well, and if not, then at least I have another crop. Well, there's ants right here, so that might be not great, but we'll figure that out. There's also a beet here. I just stepped on it, but it'll be good. All right, I have a few more seeds. Let's find someplace else to plant them. You guys are gonna remember when I say, hey, I don't know what this thing is that's coming up. You guys are gonna remember what this is, right? <laughs> This bed was originally made for ginger and turmeric. I made the mistake of leaving the ginger and turmeric uh, in the ground in the winter. If it rains a lot, they mold, they, they disintegrate, they get mushy, and they don't do well. So that is something that, um, there's one that comes up every year and I just leave it there, but that's something to consider if, you're, if you are growing those two crops, is to take them out in the winter time. Um, this now has become a fig bed. I need to remove these cattle panels at some point, um, but I have a while to do that. These figs will not get leaves again until spring, which gives me enough time to, to plant some garbanzo beans underneath them. And again, this is getting water as well. So, and I'm just gonna be planting along the edge here because um, that's where I'm gonna be able to reach <laughs> when, I, when I harvest. And we're done planting seeds. Like I said, I'm going to be likely planting more things. Um, radishes and succession sowing with some of the things we planted. And um, baba beans. And we will continue planting as we go. But got a lot done today and I'm happy where we are. Even though we had some lazy gardening earlier and continue to have that, we also have um some active gardening so maybe we sowed some seeds that were going to be successful and volunteers for us later maybe those seeds are just going to be food for this year this this next year and it's okay so thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video if you did hit that like and share it around share it around with someone that says mm, i didn't plant my fall garden say it's not too late to plant a winter garden. Again, I am in zone 9B in um, Gilroy, California, and it's not too late here. We haven't really had cold, cold, cold weather. We don't generally get cold, cold, cold weather, but it has been unseasonably warm. So it's a good idea to get these plants going. And I've seen some evidence that it's time for planting like the nasturtiums that came up. We have some beets coming up. We have some chard coming up. So it is time to plant those things now where I am. So thank you for watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. And we have lots of things going on here. Hit the bell notification so that you select all you want to get all the content. Thank you for watching and enjoy your day.